Alright man, we in this thing. Sneak out Nail Media. Sit down with Burner Malik. Had to do it. Yes sir, yes sir. Happy to be here with you, my boy. Likewise. So we just gonna be real smooth and organic with this man. Just have a real conversation. It's not even just an interview. Just a conversation on camera. Put it that way. That's a better way to put it. Yes sir. So, first and foremost, man. Let's just start off with Burner Malik, man. How you get the name? Talk to him. Let him know. Uh, shit. My middle name, Malik. Shit, my mom used to always, you know, say, call me by my middle name and shit growing up. So, I kind of used that and shit. Like, my, uh, my granny got shot when I was, I believe I was like 12. She got shot nine times. Yeah, okay. I was in the other room with it happened. And, uh, it, like, I always looked at that, like, the point in my life where I kind of started becoming more angry and shit. Angry at life. So, like, it put a burn, a flame inside of me, you know what I'm saying? So, that's why I call myself burning, because it's a flame inside of me, you know what I'm saying? That I, it can be unleashed at any point type of shit, you know what I'm saying? No, well, most definitely. See, I'm glad you said that on camera. That's something I didn't know. So, really, really, that name just come from pain stemming from the loss of your grandmother. Crazy thing is, bro, she didn't even die from that situation. Wow, she, okay. She survived. Wow, she survived. wow. She died a few years later due to complications of the situation. Um, but she straight survived that shit. But that, that situation definitely hard me though. Cause it was a nigga that was, you know, it was her boyfriend at the time. And he was around, you know what I'm saying? So, shit was crazy. Most definitely, man. It's always something new that we get when we get these sit downs with artists. That's why I love this real organic shit that I know the people didn't know. So, we going, we went in, man. Let the people know how you got your name. I already know, man. You from the loose? So, was you born here in the loop? You St. Louis artist born and raised here? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, don't you spent some time anywhere else but the loop? Uh, shit. I lived, Outside of the loop, I mean? I lived in uh, El Paso, Texas for a little bit. And I lived in uh, LA for a little minute. This is after I graduated high school and shit. So, this like uh, 19, 20, 21 type shit. Okay. So no more, just getting a look. Just trying to see where some of the influences came in. Maybe if you had moments throughout your life where you got introduced to different type of music, different type of things that maybe influenced the sound. Cause leading up to my next question, not to just run on, but um to me you got one of the most unique voices in the game. Um how do you feel about coming on the track and just having such a, a special voice, a presence when you're on the beat, man, where people could just instantly define you and know who you are? Uh Shit, I I worked on it, you know what I'm saying? Like like niggas you I leave all my music up from all my years of making music so niggas can look back and see the progression. But like you go back and you pay attention. Like I didn't I didn't tamper with multiple sounds throughout my career, but I found one where I was like, this gonna be what's gonna really set me really set me apart from other people. On top of that, it gave me the most flexibility, you know what I'm saying? I feel like with well, what I'm doing now I can go into any lane, any venture, you know what I'm saying, with that sound and, and still transition that sound into other sounds in a way and have more flexibility than if I was to just be a fool, you know, on some, I don't know, I can't even explain, but if I did it a different way, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay so no more, so it's, it's intentional and it's definitely, it's definitely something that you kind of tailor. If you will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely like I thought about how how I want motherfuckers to react when they hear me. I, I thought about all that shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm real calculated with, with most of the shit I do, so definitely. Okay, say no more, most definitely. Now, you know we gotta get into it, man. You know, get to the meat on the potatoes, man, the main main course. <laughs> we sitting here, man, we drop we drop that drop that shit episode. This right. one of the earlier joints. Mm -hmm. Um Crazy reception. I'm talking comments, shares, crazy reception, man. Just first and foremost, Hatfield just getting so much reception on that particular project. Uh, shit. It felt like, like shit. I, I don't know. I didn't really know how to feel. It was. I felt good because at the end of the day, hella people see it. Right. I look right. at it like. Niggas gonna hate regardless. You could be the, the greatest nigga in the world rapping. It's gonna be some niggas that's gonna hate. So I don't really give a fuck about a nigga hating on me. It's more about the progression and what I know I'm gonna do and what that what that shit gonna do for me. You know what I'm saying? So Most definitely. all them shirts and comments and shit, niggas trolling and shit, that shit didn't do nothing but 
make niggas want to watch. Like niggas say what they want, but niggas be, niggas want to watch. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, you they like me. They they be envious for real. I be feeling like that's what it be. A lot of people be envious. They see that I'm doing something different than other people, and then they see I'm successful with it, and they like, damn, how the fuck? I'm rapping. I should be like <laughs> getting some getting some reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting some, like, getting I should some be getting the same shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, nah, bro, that ain't how it work, bro. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't really let it get to me in no negative way. I look at it like a positive shit. More people that comment, it's good for me. Shit, I, I ain't tripping off none of that. No, I'm gonna say you honestly, you view it right because I feel like personally, the reception, good or bad, just getting people talking, getting people commenting, getting people recognized in the face, the name, the sound, and the brand, it's always a positive. Yeah, it's yeah. always a positive for any artist. That's that's my insight on that. Yeah, I got some shit in the vault, like. <laughs> Niggas go see. I'm gonna wake some niggas up, but I just know at the end of the day, this ain't niggas gonna niggas gonna hate regardless. Cause I could be Kendrick Lamar, I could be J Cole, I could be fucking uh, Pusha Ice, the yo. It don't matter who you. you nigga, everybody got haters. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't doing something right. That's what I tell a nigga. So facts, shit, facts. make sure you got some haters. That means you succeeding somewhere. You doing you elevating your life. If some niggas hating on you. Facts. Facts. Now. What what's next for Burnham Malik, man? Uh, what what do you got coming up that the people can tap into? Shit, I got an album I'm coming out with. It's gonna be crazy. I'm talking about dumb. Like, <laughs> and I got some videos I'm finna shoot. It's gonna be crazy. I'm finna go industry on niggas for real. Like y'all. What you mean by industry? <laughs> go ahead, I, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk that you shit. Know what I'm I didn't make. I didn't. I didn't connect with a few motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Made some plays. So. I'm just saying, like, shit I'm finna do finna be bigger than just St. Louis. Like, niggas be focusing on that shit. That's cool and all. And I, I feel niggas be wanting to, you know what I'm saying, get that St. Louis clout. But shit, I'm finna, I'm finna surpass that shit with shit I'm finna do. So just, just stay tuned for that. Big, big shit coming. Big, big shit. Okay. My boy 101 then slid me the phone with some, some decent ass questions on it. Hold on. Let me tap in a couple of these too. So just as far as collaborating, man, with your sound going crazy and being so unique, who in the city would you like to work with, if anybody? Shit. <clears throat> it was a few motherfuckers I wanted to work with for real. And I still, I ain't gonna lie, I still wanna work with them, but I ain't finna like reach out or like continuously reach out to a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, it, it just be, it be, it be on some shit. Like, I feel like niggas gotta meet you in person to, to fuck with you. And I ain't really into the, clicking up and hanging around other niggas and you know what I'm saying, doing all that shit. So because of that, most niggas that I would probably want to work with probably ain't trying to work because they that's how they that's how a lot of niggas think their mindset is. Okay, but I don't know you personally then. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to that shit, bro, I ain't really tripping off of uh what the fuck? <laughs> tripping off of uh working with nobody for real. Say no more, okay. So uh as far as an STL right now, if you had to give a, a top three, Burnham Malik, top three, who the top three in the city right now, if you had to answer that? Top three rappers. Top three, they could be they could be rappers, singers, you know, just top three in the loop right now. Based on what? We talk about who hot or who You could hard. you could base the credentials on who hard, who hot, who consistent, the numbers, you can base it on whatever Whatever credentials you want, but I just want Burnham Malik top three. And damn why. <laughs> uh, shit. To be real, bro, I mean, like, I, I, I said this in my Dirty Glove interview. I pay attention to numbers and statistics and shit a lot. So, like, I actually watch. I, if you rap in St. Louis, bro, I damn know who you is. So, it's like, I would probably say... It's it'll be scam, flex, and karma. Okay, so no not more. not in no order, but them three niggas they they the hottest in the city right now. And that's just me being humble. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm on y'all last though. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's real. I like that. But yeah, yeah, they they definitely they definitely got the torch right now. They going crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, I respect them young niggas. They all they all just focused on getting a the bag. They ain't really. And no beef and shit. They just trying to, you know, turn it up, push, push, turn, push that music, turn that shit up. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> trying to put a spotlight on the city. They doing that shit. I fuck with it. 
Most definitely. So, moving on to the next little question. My boy 101 came with the exclusive and took care of you. Um, I want to know who's been the most supportive person in your career thus far, personally? <coughs> supportive person in my career thus far, personally? Shit, 101. <laughs> Damn, I say no more. That's real. That's real. Shit, 101. That boy behind the camera right now. That's yeah, real deal. Yeah, boy, he, shit, he always there when I'm shooting videos, when I'm getting shit taken care of. Shit, he the main nigga. That, that be there helping me, shit. So, that's for sure. Show sure one. So, right now, man, let's say right now, motherfucker come to the mall in the scope with the million dollar check on the table. Sign you right now. What you doing with it? What you doing? What's the first thing Bonnie Malik doing with that paper? Oh, first thing I'm doing. I thought you were going to ask me what I signed. I was going to say, goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think we know the answer to that already. We know the answer to that. What's the first thing you doing with that paper? How you spending it? Uh, yeah, nah. Uh, shit, first thing I'm doing is taking care of all my uh, debts and shit. Taking care of all my bills. For sure, responsibilities, yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure, for sure. Then shit after that, shit, I fuck around. I don't even know. Try to buy a property or some shit. Go buy, try to, you know what I'm saying? I'm an investor, bro. Like, what make me happy because achievement shit. Like, I feel good today because I know I didn't did some shit. I didn't accomplish some shit, you know what I'm saying? Something That's why I ain't even tripping off the tire and all that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Ben's tired, fucked up, but I'm getting taken care of. Like, Real deal, behind like, the scenes shit, shit yo. Shit like that. Like, I ain't tripping because at the end of the day, bro, I didn't accomplish something today. So, I'm, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what make me happy. So, I'm, when I don't get that paper, I'm going to spend that paper on accomplishing some other shit. So, make some more paper. Okay, so I like that answer. All right, man, last question. And 101 wrote this down, and I also had this, but I was probably going to save it. I ain't even, I, I, I didn't even think by the end I wasn't going to end it with this. I'm going to be real with you, but I like that I reread it from here, so I got to hit you with it. You know you get the comparisons, man, the Young Thug comparisons. <laughs> First and foremost, do you feel it's any, is it any similarities? Can, can you keep it real and say, is there any similarities in your opinion? Uh... Yeah, I feel like a little bit, a little bit. Just because I do I do a higher pitch thing, he do a higher pitch thing. So it's the octave pretty much, you feel? Yeah, the yeah. octave. Yeah, but I mean and I mean i really think a lot of times it's the it's kinda like when I was growing up, Nick used to be like, uh Boy, you look like Frozone. Or boy, you look like uh, Chris Rock. Anybody that's yeah. black and, and tall, you look like him. So that the fact that me and him both got blind dreads, me and him both tall, dark skinned, skinny. Then, then I do that too. It's kind of you, you know what I'm saying. I can see how motherfuckers would draw all of that together. You know what I'm saying. So the simple, just a lot. The yeah, yeah, yeah. But you but know, did you as a person though? I ain't. I don't, I mean, no did he influence you, you know. at all? Did he influence the music at all? Probably subconsciously. You know what I'm saying. Like that's real. Show, that's real. You know what I'm saying. Like I ain't go. I, I've listened to him growing up. You know what I'm saying. So when you listen to a motherfucker growing up, then shit, they might have you know influenced you. You know what I'm saying. But when I go in the studio, really what I do is I listen to the beat and I'm like, okay, how can I come on it, you know? And then, like I said, after a while, I was just trying different sounds and I worked with that one and that one got a good reception. So I'm like, cool, this the one I'm running with. So, shit, that's how I look at it. That's what I was on with that. Nah, personally, I I love it, man. I feel like it's versatile. It's, a, it's something melodic, goddamn me. And it's just something different when you jump on the track, man. You got to... You gotta you gotta stand out from the next guy. Everybody kind of doing something similar, so I, I enjoy it when somebody can just completely stand out and be themselves and be comfortable in their own skin, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. I don't, so, yeah, I don't give a fuck about no haters. I always tell motherfuckers, man, trolls are the are the key, bro. You trolls are good, bro. You need trolls in your life. Definitely fuel that fire, man. Fuel that fire. So. Uh, last thing, is there anything you want to leave the people with before we get out this thing, man? Anything you want to leave them with, let them know? Final thoughts, anything? Shit, go get you some money. That's what I'll tell you. Shit. A million ways to do it. Let them know where they can find you at, too, man. Get them, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Burning Malik everywhere. Y'all know this. Burning Malik. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, we out, man. Burn him a leak. Let's go.